Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Grow Rugby. It's back. Most probably don't even know what Grow Rugby was. I actually started it whenever I first was doing Gift Time Rugby seven years ago, and I kind of put it into a halt because, honestly, it was just getting really hard to find interviews. But rugby is in a much different place now, and obviously we have different opportunities. And we got time. And I, I really was actually going to end up doing this whole podcast thing for... Uh, leading in with the HBC Rugby Classic, but the coronavirus decided to put a damper on these things and prevent me from being able to really kick off the way that I wanted to. So, you know, I still wanted to put out these interviews because they're really great interviews, great talking to some great people, uh, and that's basically what this whole podcast is going to end up being about. It's just me talking to people, and you probably heard a million of these, so if you're not really a big interest in interviews then hey look you know go on head on to the next one but if you want something that's dynamic and that's going to be funny and that's going to be fun and you know all those good cliche terms that everybody likes to use then i think you're going to really enjoy this and we want to really make sure that we're pulling information not just information about the people and just about rugby but how to be able to utilize rugby into a better space and kind of the opportunities that you're able to get from being a part of this rugby community life You know, and that's what it's always going to be about. So, again, thank you for being part of Grow Rugby. Grow, G-R-E-A-U-X, Rugby, Louisiana style, caca. Um, But the first guest that we're going to end up having on here, uh, you guys don't even realize is a big one for me because they're friends of mine. They were coming down. They've been wanting to help me with the HBCU Rugby Classic. And um, you just... You know, it was it was it was good. So uh, it's Kyle and Tiana Granby. They started Roots Rugby, uh, and they've been doing this like the last. Ye- they've been a year of Roots, but it's been planned for a little bit. We had a great convo. Mind some of the the switches. We had some uh, uh, technical difficulties at the beginning of it, but uh, it ended up working out. And better, for the most part, you don't even notice a thing. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, you know. Please, if you guys listen to this before you guys get a chance to, uh, please let us know what you think of the podcast. Obviously, give us uh, your rankings and hit us up on Gift Time Rugby or HBCU Rugby HBCU Rugby Classic. Um, but either or of those is going to be great. So, without further ado, let me introduce you to Kyle and Tiana Granby. Alright everybody, welcome to the podcast, I'm glad to have you, i got a special guest for you guys this week, uh, founders of Roots Rugby, don't quite remember what the acronym is, but they're coming down to the HBCU Rugby Classic, <laughs> loved having them, black couple of rugby coming out of the New York area, Tiana and Kyle Granby, guys, thank you so much for being able to come on today. Absolutely. Thank you for having us and for having us be a part of the HBCU (laughs) Rugby Classic. (laughs) It's absolutely my pleasure. Thank you. No problem. And it's Rugby Offering Opportunities to Succeed, the acronym. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Right, right. Thank you for that very much. So kind of just kind of kicking it off, you know, you guys have been doing Roots Rugby for a while, almost two years now. And, you know, whenever you guys you know, started this, like, what What was Roots supposed to be? Like, whenever you say Roots Rugby, like, what does that mean? What is Roots Rugby? Roots is a culture. I mean, um, you know, it, it came from just over years of all of these players having going through the same struggle. Um, our ancestors going through their struggles, people going, you know, past struggles, present struggles, and and just kind of coming together and building each other up through all of that, you know, and um, that's on and off the field. No, that 
that makes a lot of sense, and I that, that's that's so dope because it's something that is such a needed component. And I don't remember whenever I first heard about you guys, and I saw that it was creating this dynamic that it had uh, the African diaspora. And for me, you know, rugby has always been something that is developed through networking, it's developed through opportunity. But even the uh, inclusion component is really massive and I, I think sometimes we get lost in talking about the camaraderie overall and miss sometimes some of the niche cultural elements uh, that can come around with it so it, it's been really great to be able to see what you guys have done but you know when you have something like that uh, obviously it's not something that you 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 think of in the moment uh, so really like what what was the process of you guys figuring out what this is like how did you guys get to the point of knowing, like, how, I guess to, to put it lightly, like, how did Roots Rugby find its beginnings? Like, how were you guys able to get this all up and moving and started? Yeah, so it kind of, like I said, it was, it's been a discussion. Um, Kyle, Eric, um, Limsencombe, he um, and Kyle spoke about creating something like this um, about 10 years ago. Um and with also the, their connection with Kamani Davis, um, they've had this conversation. Um, my husband and I, we spoke about it, um, talked about the idea. We wanted this family dynamic. We wanted to help our brothers and sisters. He's back. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you got, obviously this was something that's been worked over the last few years. What was it? How did this all begin? How did this, how did Roots Rugby start? Started in our home. <laughs> Started in our home. Um, like I said, the dis- it's been a discussion, but one night we were just up, we were talking rugby, and we were talking about the future of our children. We were talking about um, just the struggle of, uh, you know, black players, the players of the African diaspora through rugby. And we, I just kind of was just like, let's do this. Let's start building this program now. Um Kyle had his notebook out, just kind of drafted things out and said, let's call this thing Roots. And it kind of just went from there. And next day we created a group chat with Kimani, Derek, Koma, Phaedra, and Hayden. And just started throwing ideas out there of how we wanted this program to look like. Um, You know, we talked about long-term, short-term goals. Um, But... Yes, in our home. That's where it started. <laughs> As all great endeavors do, you know, start from the garage, start from the home, start from the living room, you know. Mm-hmm. But, at, at, you know, as you guys have started it, from where you guys had it planned to where it is now, has it gone about where you expected it? Or has it been a little bit more, a little bit less? Like, how do you, have you felt has been the <laughs> subsequent progress versus expectation? Uh, definitely more. Um, like, you know, you have high hopes, but it's like, if you reach those, you're just like, wow. But like, we went way past like what we had hoped and dreamed. Like, um, the biggest thing, like to end up taking 30 African-American players to London within our first year, like we, we thought Vegas was gonna be the furthest we go, you know? And then we were taking people over to London that never left the United States. It was honestly like, this whole first year has been amazing and just, mind-blowing and definitely beyond expectations and then following up with the second year already like the invites that we're getting the tournaments that we're about to play these are things we had hoped for maybe like five years down the road but like we're there right now and i don't know (laughs) yeah it, it started off with the mindset like yeah let's start roots let's just start with this one tournament and just go from there you know and um we tested out the name and, and Hayden gave us the opportunity um, in New York Sevens of 2018 to kind of just put our brand out there under the nine, um, 9410 um, umbrella. And so we were able to kind of just test the waters there. And, you know, when the men won the championship and we saw the interest and the excitement that other black players had and the players of the African diaspora had, um, when just the name Roots was there and that they saw that all these players were coming together and the, the, the family feel and the culture that we brought, um, it was like, what's the next tournament? And the next one after that was Vegas. And that's when we were like, all right, we're going to go with Roots and 
we're going to just kind of start registering for as many tournaments as we can. And that's where we went from there. And then Vegas was successful for us. And then it was like, I was like, I want summer sevens for the women. So it's just like things were happening and unfolding. Like, I feel like day after day, it wasn't like, we never had, nothing was completely planned and laid out when we decided to do roots in the beginning. It was just kind of like, even our mission was changing and unfolding as things were happening for us. You know, and, and that actually makes sense. I think whenever you always, especially in rugby, it always feels like we're working within within just a moment before things are about to pop off, as opposed to really being able to plan. It's, it's almost... Uh, in, in the in the genetics of the culture. Never can be fully prepared, but you just seem to be ready right when it counts most. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. So, so, you know, obviously internally, and we'll go into that a little bit more, you guys had some great, ha- had a great uh, relationship and obviously was able to develop from there. But from the outside in, what was the reaction as you guys were initially promoting it to whenever you guys were active in the events? Uh, because while there's African teams, but may travel more so within the continent and within Europe, uh, within the U.S., and maybe even Canada to an extent. In the U.S., there's not so much of the segmentation uh, that we have within rugby. So whenever you guys were out playing, you guys came into the crowd, especially whenever you guys started being active on uh, social media, what was the reaction outside? Uh, it, was, it was great. Um, really great. I think at first, like most players, um, most black players were just like, "Yeah, this is something I've wanted. I, I thought about doing this. Like, thank, thank you. Like, let's do this." Like, everybody was on board, and then it's kind of like, "All right, well, how do I get on board? How do I actually get involved?" Um, and well, that that was one aspect. Then you have the other aspect from people that aren't of the African diaspora or black people, they you don't. Know, that are just looking at it as like, um, well, why am I left out? You know, why why isn't there a team that I can play on like this? You know, um, and it's not like we're trying to separate ourselves because of our color, but this is where our culture comes from, and people don't understand that. You know, they just see black players. They don't understand that we're bonded together because of our history and what we've been through and what we go through every day, and that that's part of who we are in our culture and our DNA, you know. You don't get upset when these Maccabee teams come about or, or a whole Polynesian Islander team, but people were starting to get upset about an all-black team. And um, that was just one aspect. But if you weren't feeling that way, then you were pretty much you know, down with what we're doing and agreeing with us. This is what, what we interpreted or what we felt like. Yeah, and I think for me the biggest standout was when we did go to Vegas and – the first day of the tournament, we set up camp, like kind of towards the exit. And <clears throat> the reaction of all of the players of African Espoir of, 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 that were on other teams um, or there just to watch um, were kind of swarming towards us um, and wanted to be a part of us. And we're trying to figure out who we were and what we were doing there wanted to wear our tank tops right away. I mean, this was like one of our first tank tops and we like sold out there in Vegas because fans and people were like, we tell them our story and tell them what we're about. And they immediately were like, well, the next tournament, like we want to be a part of this, you know, or like, like he said, supporters, people who are not of the African diaspora either were hit or miss. It was either they were supporting us or they felt, you know, a certain way about us being, being a program. Um, but for those who supported us, they were right there and, and wanted to know more about us. Um, even going to London, walking around in our Roots shirts, I, you know, I had a woman stop me and say just the word Roots. And she saw it was actually this tank top that I was wearing. Um, she saw this and the word Roots on the back. And she's just like, this shirt all together is just a beautiful message. Um, and uh, she was, you know, a European Caucasian lady. She just that's what she had to say about that. And she ended up email finding us online and emailing us and just talking about how much like our image and our our name just made so much like sense to her um and as far as our message you know and i i love that because uh i think a lot of people 
not miss, but I think a lot of people get lost sometimes in the surface ability, the surface concept, and it becomes about the message. And that's where everything I, I think has always come to when it comes to rugby culture. I think we often may get a little bit too thrown by what's happening on the field, what's happening, you know, in in you know, in the stands, even within the party aspect. But whenever you dig underneath, it's always rugby has always been culture. It's always been culture, whether we're talking South Pacific, whether we're talking Euro, whether we're talking African, and even now when we're talking Asian. So to be able to have something that continues to promote that element, uh, I think adds a different dynamic um, and, and an important one that, that facilitates that, especially the American component of it. Now, uh, you guys kind of spoke on this one, and it is a question, obviously, you guys got a lot of, which was how do people become a part of this Roots Rugby movement, if you can, if you'd like to call yeah. it that. Um, you know, what what was it that you guys uh, kind of checklisted that you wanted to make sure that uh, would with maintain the stronghold of the Roots mission and the Roots message while also allowing freedom of um, talent and expression on people? Like, what, what was it that you guys look for in a Roots rugby player? So this is something that is kind of been developing for us as well, what we actually want, like, through our experience through this last year. Um, now we're sitting down and talking about what we want that to be. Um, you can speak about like yeah. Um, I mean, at first we just we were just looking for positive-minded people. Um, obviously talented. We were, we were hoping to do our best, but um, people that would gel and come together and not be problematic. You know, just about good vibes and understanding what we're about. You know, um, to start going to Vegas <laughs> when we first went to Vegas. You know, probably about uh, sixteen of our twenty-four players didn't really actually know us. And uh, for those people to take a leap of faith to just jump into a brand new program that really hadn't done any tournaments together, pay a tour fee, pay for their own flights, and like just entrust that we're actually going to do the right thing, like that right there was the start of where we needed to be. You know, people that trusted us and that believed in what we were doing, and we had an amazing first tour. And from there, it's just been them spreading their word of mouth, you know, about what we did and what we went through, and then. The people, the right people are coming about from that. You know, um, their friends are hearing about it. Oh, I want to be a part of Roots too. I want to be a part of Roots too. The right people are coming about. They hear it. about their experience, and then they, you know, drive um, the right people to us. I, mm -hmm. I feel that's what's been happening. Um, you know, of course, we started with the the basic like, send us your highlight reel, and, and you know, send us a uh, a coach's referral and, you know, talk about yourself more. But the more we were developing relationships and, and such through these tours, it was kind of like, hey, you support us and you you believe in our mission and you believe in what we're trying to do here. Um, you know, come on board. And even with summer sevens for me, it was like we were getting players of the non-African diaspora who were like kind of hesitant but wanted to be a part of it. And it was like, no, like this is – this is about the culture like you, you speak about as well. And I feel like roots in itself, we're starting to develop more than just an African diaspora culture or black culture. We're developing our own culture, you know, our own roots culture. And if that's what people want to be a part of and support, then, you know, that's what we're looking for. You know, I, I think that's real. And <clears throat> it, again, it goes back to obviously what I said, culture being the underlying concept for what rugby does and I think what makes it different. So to not only step from not it's not even stepping aside. It's it's moving evolving it from it just being a niche concept to being a customized and unique concept that goes something that actually has an everlasting effect uh, when it comes to 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 growth and obviously how people will fit into it because it's very difficult to create um, consistency unless people know what it is that they're expecting. So to be mm -hmm. able to know that you guys have been able to see that and look forward to that is, is great. So mm -hmm. it kind of brings us a little bit to with the HBCU Rugby Classic, which was one of the reasons why I wanted to bring you guys on. And, you know, we talked about this last mm -hmm. year. Actually, I talked about this with Kyle and you uh, 2018, even for our first one, but really a lot more going to that 2019 year. Uh, mm -hmm. was 
about the concept of of culture culture was always everything and culture and networking and, and that development so you know you guys are coming into this <laughs> 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 I got a tough choice to make here. <laughs> this is Charlie on the daily. I'm making it real wisely. <laughs> I'm making it real hard for me right now. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Boss lady in the making. I can see it. Yeah. I see it. <laughs> Um, but you know, coming into this, obviously, you guys are entering in. We're 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 entering into an area where you know you're gonna have kids as well as collegiate students. Some who have played with you guys, high school kids who probably haven't heard about you, and now mm -hmm. having a chance to do. Um, what are some of the things that obviously you've touched on a little bit? But what are some of the things that you want to uh, have expected from? maybe next generation that could be coming in, even if that's, you know, three, four, five years, or even just next year, like, what is it that you want to be able to hope to express to the next generation as in their rugby journey and what you guys are expressing with Roots? Oh, sure. Um, I think uh, just first self-pride in who you are and uh, where you come from. That's been uh, one of the biggest uh comebacks that people are saying to us that um, when they bought on tour, you know, it brought their sense of pride back, you know, they may, now they, they want to go and say hi to other black, random black people on the street because they feel that connection more that they, they should be proud of who they are and where they come from and the people around them. Um, so yeah, just like our younger generation, just having more pride in who they are first and then not being afraid to go beyond what their coaches expect of them. You know, most of them keep ending up on the wing and just feeling like they just need to run fast or run strong and hard instead of being able to learn how to kick, how to chip it over, you know, how to really pass, take that 10 spot. I don't want the next generation to just be all over instead of uh, a prop, a second row, or on the wing. Um, and just so that they also just know that they have support. Now, this whole program has been built for them. Mm -hmm. Um so to know that they are not alone in whatever they're feeling, whatever they're going through, um, and just to stay hungry and keep, just keep reaching for their goals, like Kyle's saying, um, and to know that it's more than just about rugby, but it's, it's about families, about positivity. It's about spreading this to your communities um, and just becoming something great, and, uh, you know, and uh, just representing yourself and your culture well. Um, I, well, I certainly hope to be like that national side, basically, you know. We are representing the people, and I hope people have that pride that when they play for us, they feel like they're playing for a national side, you know. You can't always play for USA or, or Jamaica or something like that, but we're here to represent our people in another way. We're the subcategory national side. Just let it be known. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, some people have been telling us like they are willing to hang up their boots for national sides to come tour with roots because Yo, you know. look, I mean, <laughs> I look, look, I've I, I've honestly been a big believer that like part of that is like the future, like maybe not the future because I guess it already exists, mm -hmm. but like one of the elements that go with rugby that I've always been trying to figure out is. You know, we, we find ourselves getting sectionalized into, you know, the professional versus uh, the club. But, like, it's the travel component of rugby that also it makes it very uh, accessible, makes it very, maybe not accessible, but makes it much more unique again. It, it's kind of like, all right, I might not be pro in the classic sense, but if we're traveling to all these places... Right. Yo, I'm, I'm developing this network. Oh, I kind of can make my, I can, I can make my growth from there, you know. And so to have these little components, you know, you don't have to be a USA Falcons. Uh, you can be a Roots, you know. You can, you know, have to, <laughs> yo, you, you know, I don't remember what the other ones are. There's so many That's animals. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> like, have, have they seen our list of tournaments for the year? Like, let me right. go. Like, have you seen what, where we're playing? We got rugby town. We're playing against other like top top club teams. We're, we got Safari Seven. We're playing against national teams. Why wouldn't you want to be a part what, of this? What's the difference? You're paying for your flights, right? Exactly. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's not the variation. You may as well enjoy it all the way through. I mean, if you're gonna pay, you 
I may as well take the ball back. Say, you know? <laughs> I always want to get a great experience. That way. <laughs> over the roots, you yeah. know? And look, I think the other thing that needs to be said, you guys get great coaches. Look, Cam, Coma Fishbin, you guys have had a great time with her. You've had Phaedra, I forget. You've had uh, um, Tiffany, Tiffany, you know, as well as a coach, which I, I think those are elements. Like, what were the decisions in that? Was it just because it's like New York people got to always hang with New York people? Since oh, it's so like, New York. <laughs> like support. Like, you want it to be – they these. A lot of these coaches reached out to us and said, hey, we want to be a part of this and what, whatever you guys need. And we were like, whatever? Well, this tour is coming up. <laughs> you want to come on? And, and it was just like that. It wasn't, there was no, like, we didn't have to, like, pull people's feet to try to come on these tours with us. People just wanted to support us and do whatever um, they could do to help build our program. Oh, I see. And, that, again, I, I, I love that, you know, for you guys, though, what is it that you guys have been learning? Obviously, people are, will get their own value, but for you guys, you know, what is it that you guys are gaining both on field and what are you also learning off field? Balance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're both. <laughs> We're both. <laughs> yeah. That's, the, really, that's the, the first lesson, like, honestly. Yeah. Um, How to balance, what to balance. <laughs> Yeah. If you and, can balance. <laughs> yeah, it's it's absolutely um, just learning when to do things, when not to do things. I mean, um, you know, even down to like an, have, setting up an interview like this is kind of like, sorry, gift, we got to put a child. <laughs> now she's just going to be a part of the interview. Yeah. <laughs> so. It's like recognize our flexibilities. All right. <laughs> recognize the flexibilities. <laughs> Like, how real do you want this interview to be? All right, we'll bring the kid in. We'll bring the other one in. Look, look, we'll just take it. I mean, a lot of times where, you know, Kyle's like holding our newborn. I have her trying to put her to sleep. And we're like sending emails or designing jerseys. And like, it's just an ongoing process. So balance. definitely balance <laughs> yeah. is like the biggest thing that we we definitely have learned, you know. Yeah. For all intents and purposes, it almost sounds like you guys created a new business the way that it goes about because you're sharing these elements almost uh, exclusively to that. It's you know making sure you organize, making sure you keep these things together. You know, with even let's take it even from that look. You know, does it feel like it's something that you know could grow into that element, or is it something that you guys want to kind of keep within? the nature of um it's its own let's call it rugby innocence so we're unsure honestly it's something that we're just going with the flow you know by moment goes where it goes um we're not setting up too high of expectations um we know what our purpose is and we're going to just go and run with it and see and see where it takes us um, it's not that we're going to say, like, deny those um, possibilities, but, you know, this it's is more, where we are right yeah. now. We're more so just about continuing on our mission just to expose the best African diaspora players, like, all over and just show what these coaches are missing and represent for our people, give people pride, and just, like, if it turns into whatever it turns into, <laughs> I, I don't know where, <laughs> where, that, where that even goes. Like, I don't know. I want to just make sure we can – get people on fields, you know, give them other places to play, a place to stay. Like Kyle mentioned earlier, we are further than we even thought we would be in our, you know, going into our second year. So this is already like a lot, you know, mm-hmm. sec- into our second year and, you know, newborn and like all these other things going on outside of both full-time jobs and everything. So like I said, we're not trying to set too high of our expectation, but you know, it comes around, it comes around. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. So uh, quickly, where can people get in contact with you guys when it comes to roots and everything? Uh, first, you can check out our website, www.rootsrugbyfamily.com. And they can follow us on Instagram, Roots Rugby Family, at Roots Rugby Family. Um, and our Facebook, Roots Rugby Family and Friends. Um, email us at Roots Rugby Family at gmail.com, like, 
You get the idea, right? Yeah. Just add <laughs> There might be a root, a family somewhere. I think there might be a theme. In your, in your search engine, just start with roots. You'll, you'll be fine. Well, we'll get Twitter <laughs> soon enough. Like, we're, we're personable people. Um, if you message us, we'll, we'll get to I it. Mean, I guess. You guys yeah. might have a personality. I guess. Kyle Granby, find us. <laughs> we're not ignoring people. We're trying to respond to everybody. <laughs> if we don't understand you, we'll find somebody that does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Yo, guys, thank you so much. Bro, thank you. Thank bro. you. I appreciate you having us. We're so excited for March 28th. I'm happy to have you guys come. I can't wait to show show off the little bits of Baton Rouge that's kind of all right to look at. I don't rock the carry on. Cause the dogs make the carry on. It's that black superhero music carry on. It's that black superhero music carry on.